Welcome to the fifth lecture in Module 5. And in this lecture, we'll talk about the model view controller design pattern. We'll talk about it at a very high level in this lecture, and then we'll talk about how Rails implements controllers, and then we'll revisit the model view controller design pattern in a later lecture, talking about how Rails specifically implements it. So, early web applications did not have much organization on the server side. There was just primarily the task of fetching static web pages and giving them back to the user. There was no separation of data from how that data was presented to the user. And the problem is, as applications became more complicated and server-side scripts became more complicated, the, it became very difficult to maintain these applications. The applications broke. The model view controller design pattern is a design pattern that was um, already available in the user interface community was commonly used. What happened next was that folks applied that to web application architectures and it helped clean all of this up. Made it a lot easier to maintain web applications. And here's the advantages you get with the model view controller design pattern. It decouples data, in our case this is referred to as the model, from the presentation and we'll refer to this as the view. A controller handles the request and then coordinates between the model and the view. This makes applications, as I've mentioned, much more robust, much easier to maintain and debug. Let's take a look here. So the model view controller design pattern um, just actually is a collection of other design patterns. It's an architecture level design pattern, as I've already mentioned. It has three components. Here I show the controller mediating with the model as well as the view. So the model is the domain specific representation of the data. It's the data associated with your application in other words. Um, and this is the data over which your application operates. Um, and domain logic by the way kind of gives meaning to your data. So um, we've already seen in Rails that we're using active records to help us maintain this model and connect it to a database. The view, this is what uh, is used to render the data that's in the model. And typically this is a view that's suitable for interaction. You put links, for example, on a page when you provide a view. Um, and typically it's in the form of some type of a user interface. Now the nice thing about separating the, the, the presentation from the data is that you can have multiple views for the same data depending upon uh, the user or as you update your application you can change what the view looks like. And then finally, the controller, as I've mentioned, is the thing that mediates between these two. And in some model view controller implementations, there's actually a connection between the model and the view. They can communicate with one another. In our Rails um, instance, it's, it's, um, it's, it's the controller that does most of this mediation. Now, there are different varieties of model view controllers, as I've said, slight different variations that, uh, that uh, determine how this flow control goes. But here's a very generic one. This is kind of the, the basic idea behind model view controller. So the user is interacting with an interface in some way, and this is typically some involves pressing a button or filling out a form, doing something like that. The controller then handles the input request. When the user clicks the button, it sends an event um, that the controller then handles through, in many cases, some type of a callback function or a callback mechanism. And then that gets converted into an event that is understandable to the controller and allows the appropriate data to be extracted from the model. The controller notifies the model that this action took place and, and sometimes this could change the state of the model itself. For example, the user could update their password, update uh, their phone number, hit submit, the, the controller then tells the model that you need to change that information in that particular user's information in the database. And then the view queries the model in order to generate an appropriate um, view that's that's returned to um, the client. And so the view gets its own data from the model, but in some implementations, as I've, as I've mentioned, and in specific uh, Rails, the controller may issue an instruction to the view to render itself. And this is, again, what we see in Rails. Um, you can also have this situation where the, there's an observer design pattern where the view is always looking at the model, and every time it sees an update, it automatically updates itself.
Again, not how Rails does it. The, the controller is responsible for doing that. And then it starts the cycle over again. The user just uh, user interface is again waiting for uh, further user interactions, and, and this whole control flow starts again. So this is the basic idea behind the model view controller design pattern, the partitioning of the components and the flow through the architecture. We're going to see how Rails does this shortly. This completes the fifth lecture in Module 5.